Are you faithless or faithful? Is God faithless or faithful? And obviously, the conclusion should be God is faithful and if He's faithful, we as His people ought to be faithful as well and not faithless. So that's the ideal. God is faithful, we are equally, well, not as equally faithful because we can't, but we ought to also be faithful. But today's reading from the Transformed by the Word reading plan, which is Jeremiah chapter 3, verse, and I'm focusing on 6 to 13 in the verses, I think it tells us about how humanity or the people of God are often very much and very frequently unfaithful. But that unfaithfulness never affects the faithfulness of God. You see, in verse 6 onwards, we are, well, let me just read this or summarize it for you. God, through the Jeremiah, God, through the prophet Jeremiah, asks certain questions. He says this, Have you seen what faithless Israel has done? Faithless Israel, Israel being the northern kingdom. Have you seen what faithless Israel has done? Yeah. She has done all kinds of things. She has committed adultery against God. So God here is using this picture of a husband and a wife. So God being the husband, the wife being Israel. Have you seen what faithless Israel has done? She has committed adultery. And he says this in verse 7. I thought that after Israel had done all this, she would return to me. But she did not. So God is saying, even though Israel was unfaithful, he thought that after she was unfaithful, after she had had a fling, so to speak, she would return to God, but she did not. And then he moves on to talk about Israel's sister, Judah, the southern kingdom. He says, and her unfaithful sister, he calls Judah also equally unfaithful. Her unfaithful sister, Judah, saw it. Judah saw what her sister kingdom, Israel, did. God in verse 8 says this, I gave faithless Israel her certificate of divorce and sent her away because of all her adulteries. Plural. Yet, I saw that her unfaithful sister Judah had no fear. Judah, you saw how unfaithful your sister was, Israel. How you saw how I judged her, how I sent her away in the language found in Jeremiah chapter 3, how I gave her a certificate of divorce. But yet you, Judah, equally unfaithful, had no fear. Judah also went out and committed adultery. Because, verse 9, because Israel's immorality mattered so little to her, she devoured the land and committed adultery with stone and wood. In spite of all this, verse 10, her unfaithful sister Judah did not return to me with all her heart, but only in pretense, declares the Lord. So verse 11, God says this, Faithless Israel is more righteous than unfaithful Israel. Judah. But he goes on in verse 12 and he says, Proclaim this message to the north, Israel. Return, faithless Israel. I will frown on you no longer. Why? For I am faithful. Only acknowledge your guilt that you have rebelled against the Lord your God and that you have not obeyed me, declares the Lord. So here we have this picture of a husband, faithful God. We have a picture of two sisters, unfaithful Israel, northern kingdom, and unfaithful Judah, southern kingdom. What's interesting is Israel was unfaithful, and so she had received the consequences of her actions. God had divorced her, still unfaithful. But her sister, unfaithful Judah, saw what had occurred to Israel, the southern kingdom, but yet had not done anything. So the southern kingdom has seen what had occurred to the northern kingdom of Israel, but yet the southern kingdom remained unfaithful and sinned against God by what? Committing adultery. But yet he calls, God calls, faithless Israel more righteous 
that unfaithful Judah. Why? Because while this one had sinned and committed adultery, Judah had done the same, but they had pretended to be, un to be faithful to God. That pretense, the hypocrisy, is what caused them to be worse in the eyes of God in their unfaithfulness when compared to Israel. But in the midst of all these things, God says, yet I am faithful. So Israel, because I am faithful, if you acknowledge your guilt, if you repent and turn around, I will take you back. What's the lesson here, this unfaithful, unfaithful, and faithfulness of God? I think it's simply this. If, if we, and surely we know ourselves where we are with God, if we find ourselves in a position now where we have strayed from God, have in a sense become unfaithful to Him, may we be quick to acknowledge our guilt, to turn back to God and to obey Him. And we can do that because God is faithful even when we are unfaithful or faithless. So if we find ourselves in the same position as Israel, being unfaithful, let us be quick to acknowledge our guilt and turn around. But if we are, in a sense, like Judah, and we see the consequences of what being unfaithful to God is like, and we see how God judges others, may we also be quick to repent and not simply see it, but pretend, not repent, but pretend to be faithful to God while hiding our unfaithfulness because God surely frowns on that. But in the midst of everything, I think the good thing is this. Let us always hold on to and remember that even though we may be unfaithful or faithless, God is always faithful. And He always calls and waits upon us to turn around to Him, not to pretend, but to repent. May we, when we fall into unfaithfulness, always remember the faithfulness of God. Amen.